How's it going you guys? Welcome back to Vancouver Carpenter. Today uh, we have a guest. Say hello to Lulu. Uh, <laughs> Alright, so are Hilti tools worth the price? Um, first off, I want to say this video is not sponsored in any way whatsoever. And personally, I could probably run Makita exclusively for the rest of my life and have zero problems with the performance of my tools or what I think of them how they perform, blah, blah, blah. You get the idea. I like the blue tools too. So why then did I decide to go and spend 700 bucks at the Hilti store again this morning? Well, the reason is, is because I've actually had a lot of good experiences with their tools. Also, I wanna make it clear that I have pretty limited experience with the range of tools Hilti has, so I want you guys to round this video out in the comments. Let me know, do you think Hilti is worth it? What Hilti tools have you owned? And which ones would you buy or would you not buy again? So please, fill us in, let us know everything in the comments. All right, but let's get on to what some of my first purchases were and what I thought of them. So the very first Hilti thing I ever bought was just your basic Hilti SD4500 screw gun. So just a basic drywall screw gun. So there was nothing particularly fancy about this and I don't see how it maybe outperformed or did anything any differently than another screw gun, but I did like it. Maybe I did get a little bit of the red tool snobbery, but basically, it was just a really good screw gun. It performed really smoothly. I've never had any problems with it and I'm happy I bought it. And one of the reasons I bought it was for the next tool that I got. So I got it to get the um, SMD50, the drywall attachment. So this is the older one. But yeah, I got this one specifically for this reason so that I could buy this upgrade right here. Oh, haven't run it in a while. <laughs> but yeah. This was a wicked attachment. I liked this screw gun quite a lot with this attachment. However, the only problem with it was that you had to push pretty hard. And so if you weren't sort of directly centered under it and able to get your shoulder right in line with it, what would happen is you tend to put the screws in off center or they wouldn't go in all the way. And actually the worst thing that happened was I actually tore my shoulder pretty badly using this tool reaching in awkward positions trying to get it to work. So hopefully you learned from my experience and um, you know what, use this thing when you can really put your body weight behind it. Anyways, I thought this was a pretty good tool, but um, they actually discontinued this model and the screws got really hard to find like within a few months after I bought it. So that was a pretty big bummer. All right, the next thing that I bought, the next Hilti tool was my cordless Hilti gun. Now this one I fell in love with right away. This is just an incredibly smooth, long lasting battery life gun. You know, you can run this thing like full bore like this and sink screws for like one or two hours. This thing lasted so long. And this was like four years ago. Batteries have improved a lot. But yeah, I love this gun. It actually performed even better than the corded one in terms of just like ergonomics and how smooth it worked. Like, I don't know why it was different. They're both just an SD4500, but this one was an amazing drill and it did work really nicely with the auto feed attachment. So I very much enjoyed this purchase and I bought this at the same time as an impact driver. So this is the, I don't know, SD18A. Again, I bought this about four years ago. Now I actually hated this drill right off the bat. So there's a couple reasons. Now one of them is there's a delay when you pull the trigger. So it's about a half second delay. And I got used to that, it's not a big deal, but anytime I lent my drill to anyone, they hated it. But that's not the reason that I hated it. I mean, you get used to that. The reason that I hated this drill is because with the batteries that it came with, so the ones that are on this, these smaller 1.6 amp ones, it's underpowered. And what would happen is the bit would always jump out of the screw. And I just thought it was a really, really lame drill. I was super bummed I bought it. It just basically sat on the shelf because I'm not kidding you, the bit was always jumping out of screws and it looked like I was a novice and I'm leaving, you know, like a little square Robertson mark in all the materials everywhere. So it was like, it had to go. However, eventually I did actually upgrade the battery to the full size, what was this one? 5.2 B22 battery. As soon as I got this, this drill performed amazingly. I can run, like if I'm using this drill all day long, I can run off one battery charge, no problem. And if I'm using it a little bit lighter, I can often get two or three days. Like, I'm serious, I'm not exaggerating there. So yeah, great power, great battery life. I was really happy with this tool once I got the right battery. 
but it was definitely super underpowered with the little battery that the drywall drill came from. I don't like the drywall drill with this battery, it's just too heavy. So the next Hilti purchase I made was the laser, just the PM2L, you know, it shoots a nice uh, level laser line and a nice plumb line. So this thing is responsible for a lot of nice cabinet installs, a lot of nice straight bulkheads and framing, and just generally nice straight framing. But you know what, the laser wasn't the reason that my cabinets were installed nicely and the framing was done well, that's experience. But this made it go a lot easier and quicker. So I definitely recommend this one. I mean, this is a fantastic buy. I know there's a lot of other lasers out there too, but I've been really happy with this one. Um, the first thing I did though, as soon as I started kind of stocking up on Hilti tools, is I got rid of the Hilti bag. Because the last thing I want in my vehicle look, when people are looking through the windows is the Hilti bag. So I started using this Husky bag for my laser and all my other stuff. All right, so what did I spend my money on today? Okay. So today, I finally splurged and I got myself the new, which is a few years old now, but the new Hilti Auto Feed attachment. So instead of having these long collated strips, like the old one used to have, and these would get caught on things, they were just kind of a mess, a little bit harder to use. It has totally different strips. Let's take a look at these. I had to buy a whole box of them, 8,000 screws. Like I'm never going to go through this. I'll have these for the rest of my life. But it was all they had. Oh, that's a lot of screws. <laughs> but yeah, it's these sort of shorter little strips right here. So I think these are going to be a lot more functional. Yeah, let's take a look at that. Hopefully, the spring is not quite so hard on this one. But yeah, that's just definitely... A lot less cumbersome. You don't have these big long strips falling all over the place. You can put these strips in your pouch really easily. So hopefully this is a nice improvement. And I got this because my thumb is super messed up right now. And the torque back from using a drywall drill puts a lot of pressure on my thumb and it's like totally messing it up. So I got this so that I can use it left handed if I have to today. And also just to speed the process up. Like if you've ever hung by hand with a regular drill and then used an auto feed attachment, like it's a lot faster, don't kid yourself. It really is faster. So there's that. And um, you guys know that I've been saying that I haven't had a working drill for a long time. Well, finally bought another drill. I got just the kind of basic one. Eh, where's the tape? All right, yeah, I got just the kind of basic one. So there's nothing too fancy about it, like no hammer drill or anything. Because uh, the hammer drill one was like super crazy heavy. But you know, this should just be a nice powerful drill. Definitely happy to have another Hilti tool. Um, I'm not abandoning Makita tools. Like, I think Makita has a lot of wicked specialty tools. And I do need to upgrade all my batteries and sort that out. But because I have some good functioning Hilti batteries right now, I thought, why not just upgrade the Hilti tools for the time being? And this was only like 144 Canadian, which isn't that much for a tool only. And on top of that, I also got another larger battery. So this is a 4.0 B22. It's actually smaller and lighter than the old one. And is, um, the last one was 5.2. So that's, that's stronger than this one, but this is still pretty good, 4.0. And it's still compatible with my four-year-old tools, which is nice. So they didn't make their old tools obsolete. So happy about that. Now there was a couple of other things that I got here. Just some basic stuff. Just some more drill bits, you know, for the drywall drill. I like the Hilti bits. And we're gonna test out some Hilti cutout bits, drywall cutout bits, and see if those are any better than the Rotozip ones I've been buying that I break all the time. Anyways, that's what I bought today. Those are my Hilti tools and my experiences. Let me know in the comments what Hilti tools do you like? Are they worth it? And would you buy them again? Anyways, thanks for watching. Hopefully you guys got something out of this video and uh, till the next one. Let's see if the old batteries work on the new tool. Ooh, new tool smell. New brushes. Yeah, that smells different. What are you up to? What are you doing?
I don't know if that's a good thing or not. <laughs> you gonna bite me? <laughs> Maybe? <laughs> yeah.